We're five days away from the New Hampshire Republican primary. Nikki Haley has been exchanging attacks with Donald Trump. The former U.S. U.N. ambassador is trying to close the gap with the former president, that gap in the polls, that is. Meanwhile, Ron DeSantis is focused on the next primary contest, moving the majority of his staff to South Carolina. CBS News political correspondent Caitlin Huey Burns has the latest from the trail. All eyes are on New Hampshire. Tonight in the Granite State, Nikki Haley is sharpening her attacks against her chief rival, Donald Trump. It's the drama and the vengeance and the vindictiveness that we want to get out of the way. That pitch resonated with independent voters we spoke with. I think she really needs to go after President Trump, former President Trump more, really a little more aggressively. I voted for Biden. Um, however, um, I, I do believe that we need to change. But she still has an uphill climb. With five days to go, Haley is barnstorming New Hampshire as Trump maintains a steady lead in the polls. Hey, Governor, is New Hampshire make or break for your campaign? We got to go to my home state of South Carolina. So then the question is, is what is her path in South Carolina? Because I don't think if you lose your home state that you can continue. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is heading to South Carolina, hoping for a warmer reception, all but seating frosty New Hampshire, where he's polling in the single digits. If she wins, Biden wins. Trump is eyeing a solid New Hampshire win to shore up the nomination early, and Haley supporters are managing expectations. We wanted to get down to a two-person race. We did it. How do you think it is that Donald Trump is still way ahead here? Well, he's the incumbent, right? I mean, he's the former president. I mean, the fact that this is a former president that can barely hold 50 percent of his own party's support, that actually isn't so good. And Caitlin Huey Burns joins me now from the campaign trail in Manchester, New Hampshire. Kaylin, what are voters telling you about what else are they telling you? You had some great sound in your piece there about the primary and the front runner. Yeah, good to be with you, John. Well, voters that we've been talking to, a lot of them here, as you know, are undeclared voters, which means that they can participate in the Republican primary if they want to, but don't necessarily belong to the party. And a lot of the undeclared voters and independents that we were talking to were supportive of Nikki Haley, kind of seeing her as a vehicle for defeating Donald Trump. Um, but she, uh, Haley and Trump are competing for very uh, different sets of voters. I sat down with some yesterday who were just overall very disappointed in their options. As you know, New Hampshire is a place that really prides itself on being the first in the nation primary. You get to meet candidates face to face. You get to ask them questions. It's an engaging process. This time around, however, feels very different. Listen to what some of the voters told us. I think the president is a leader politically, internationally, and morally. And I think uh, Trump's morals, what he's done, has been horrible. I want my grandkids to look up to the president. So I'm undeclared. Um, and oftentimes I do vote Democrat. But this time I'm going to be voting in the Republican primary. And I think DeSantis is sort of another Trump in just different clothes. So I'll be supporting Haley. So you are voting in the Republican primary yes. to try and stop Trump exactly. from being the nominee. Exactly. And how about you? I, I cast a vote for the same reason you toss a penny in a fountain to make a wish. I know that when you do cast a vote, it's, it's, I look at it as more of like an exercise of free speech. So you can kind of sense uh, not a real excitement about the choices. And it's interesting because I think what Nikki Haley here is facing is a enthusiasm or intensity gap. You talk to Trump supporters, and of course, they're very enthusiastic about him. But when you talk to Haley supporters, it's more of how can we stop Trump, not necessarily how can we uh, boost Haley. So she can appeal to independent and, and undeclared voters here, but uh, can she get some Republicans to turn out enthusiasm for her through the stretch is a, a question that remains to be seen. Yeah, and Caitlin, um, you know, we hear a lot about the independent voters of, uh, from New Hampshire, but give, me, give us a sense of Trump's strength in the state, because with DeSantis moving on to South Carolina, um, his voters, um, you know, might go back to Donald Trump. It seems they're less likely to go to Nikki Haley. Um, so uh, what do you what can you say about the strength of Donald Trump in New Hampshire? Because um, he's pretty strong in his party. 
He is very strong. And uh, if you think about New Hampshire, it's the place that really gave him a boost. In 2016, he lost Iowa, came here to New Hampshire, uh, won New Hampshire, and that really catapulted him through the primary. So it really gave him his start. Uh, and, you know, you talk to the Trump campaign and they note that independent voters can support Donald Trump, too. Just because you're undeclared and don't belong to the party uh, doesn't mean you are necessarily uh, against uh, Donald Trump. So they are also competing there a little bit uh, as well. But uh, Trump and Haley are really going after each other in these final days because this really has become just a two person race here in New Hampshire. As you mentioned, DeSantis has kind of all but ceded New Hampshire to the two of them. Um, Donald Trump is is very confident in his chances here and his campaign really just wants a huge win here to be able to kind of coalesce the party around him and, and move on and lock this nomination up. Caitlin Huey Burns in Manchester, New Hampshire. Thank you.